Hi, and welcome to Coffee with April. Uh, with myself, Joseph, and Patrick as well here. We were uh, switching it up a little bit today. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk about roasting. We're actually going to talk about roasting from Patrick's perspective. We don't need to talk about my uh, new beginnings this week. We're going to talk about Patrick's experience and a little bit about what well, he's been thinking about regarding uh, they, turning they, point. They go hand in hand. True. Yeah. 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 Um, so I know Patrick's wanted to talk about this for a little while. Yeah. Uh, and I guess this is something you've seen a lot in terms of consultancy and that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, we're actually going to talk about turning point uh, alongside with lots of different other roasters probes, everything behind what we see on Cropster or what you see on your own interface on your own roaster, what you may be seeing or what you may not be seeing. Yeah, cool. Um, yes, so this is a subject that is super interesting, maybe also the most relevant subject when it comes to, uh, when it comes to roasting in general and something that you need to understand as a roaster uh, and something that when I travel, I realize that a lot of people maybe do not understand or even worse, they think they really understand, but they actually don't. So this all kind of originates from the fact that more and more we're roasting based on lines, right? So different curves and lines on a screen, uh, which is all good. I love lines. Mm -hmm. Um, I love numbers when roasting. I think we should measure as much as we can. I love Cropster. We love Cropster yeah, it's true. by default. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're awesome. Everyone that's roasting should work with them. Uh, that's very simple. But yes, part of what we want to talk about here is that the curve or the line, right? Where we talk a lot about rate of rice. Uh, we talk a lot about turning point in general when we're roasting coffee. Turning point is this little valley thing that happens when the, the coffee comes into the roaster and the temperature goes down uh, and then at a certain point it starts going back up again. So it's the bean curve that basically goes down and then up again, right? And there's a lot of roasters out there that are basing the roasting on this turning point yeah. thing, right? And also when in the, in the process of, of Joe learning how to roast coffee, it's, it's, a, it's an important subject to kind of bring out. It's something that we, we do discuss a lot. And uh, turning point doesn't exist. That's, I think that's the easiest way to actually put it. Uh, turning point is a necessarily evil for you, for the, the equation to generate a curve, yeah. right? Or a line. So it's there, but it actually doesn't tell you anything. And part of that is because what happens when you take in the green coffee is that you're letting a bunch of kind of fresh air in or cooler air than the machine itself, as well as green coffee that is room temperature or a bit colder as well. So the whole environment get kind of shocked yeah. as well as the bean probe, yeah. right? So the reading is an absolutely terrible indication uh, in terms of using when you're roasting, right? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't help you whatsoever. Uh, and it's not relevant at any point. Uh, so that's, that's step number one. Sure. Step number two, which I think is, is equally important, which most of us do not kind of understand as well. And this kind of very much goes along the lines of these kind of uh, flicks mm -hmm. or crashing rate of rises after crack. Um, it's important to understand why the rate of rise cracks, falls down after crack. Right? Yeah. And the biggest reason for that is the bean probe reading. Because what happens when the coffee goes into crack, it starts releases a bunch of vapors and steam. And all of this is effectively cooling down the probe, which is giving you the illusion of the temperature going down, yeah. right? which actually doesn't happen. And funny enough, the more energy you go into crack with and the bigger the batch, the kind of sharper that fall is, mm. right? So a coffee with a very high moisture content um, will crash down more than a coffee that is not. So yeah. most of you guys that's been roasting haven't seen that, for example, Kenyan coffee crashes really aggressively, right? Versus a natural coffee that doesn't yeah. crash yeah. that naturally, right? The, the decline is almost perfect when it comes to that. Um, and it's important to understand that that is just based on the function of the green coffee going through crack, yeah. right? It's a release of energy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then most importantly, something that you need to factor in when you roast as well, because you're not losing the momentum or the energy 
the way that you think you are, right? It's just a probe that is suddenly giving you a different reading, a mm. bunch of a different new things in the machine being mainly steam, right? Um, so that's are two kind of very important variables that we're basing um, a lot of our roasting on yeah. in general uh, as an industry. Yeah. And something that you see a lot of social media, something that you see a lot kind of everywhere. Yeah. And it's important to understand what actually happens um, and what those kind of lines actually indicate. Mm. Presumably you're, and this is again something you would have seen um, in working with uh, clients through consultancy, every roast machine is going to be very different in mm. terms of its probe positioning, mm. size, conductivity. Mm. That's understanding that I assume is also very important to, mm. uh, to approaching that, that roast as well and reading those numbers because you're, you're interpreting data but you're interpreting data from something which is on its own not singular. It's not yeah. the same thing across every single machine. Oh, no, for sure. And, and, and also how you read it is completely different. Right? Yeah. It can be an easy thing, you know, different size of probes. Uh, you can also have just have too many connections between your, your computer and, and the roaster so that your reading is actually not accurate and you have all of these weird anomalies, flicks and, and, and so on on the machine, which yeah. is perhaps not even uh, an indication of something that happens when you roast, but only yeah. an indication of your connection between your, your computer and the machine itself, right? So there's a bunch of really basic mechanical slash technical things behind the readings. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, for, we, we are gonna have a longer video about the, what I'm gonna say now later, it will come, sure. but the whole fact of a smooth decanting rate arise, which is, uh, yeah. We, sh yeah, we shouldn't even go into it. No, we need That's to elaborate. It's a very frustrating yeah, subject we... in, in, in general. Like it's, it's ridiculous to, to think that everyone in the world should have uh, a line that, that kind of looks the same because all the roasting systems in the world are completely different. And I think that the key thing here is, uh, or what I'm trying to say in, in, uh, uh, in, a, in a weird kind of way is that, you know, numbers are super important. Mm -hmm lines are maybe not as important right we're coffee roasters uh, and we need to understand the numbers we need to understand where they come from we need to understand where our probes are placed uh, the quality of our probes and the quality of that reading and how we store that data mm -hmm. uh, if anyone out there is not kind of 100 percent sure about this just call Croster. they will tell you everything they will tell you based on your model where to put the probe what kind of probe you should have how you should hook up your computer to Croster to get a proper reading yeah whatever you do, um, but you know, stop looking at the lines uh, or at least start understanding the lines and what you actually see and then you can interpret, interpret that into roasting and then yeah. what kind of, uh, whatever way you want to. Um, I think that, I think, I think we're gonna wrap it up there yeah, because otherwise we, I'm just gonna keep on we smashing. Need to, yeah. uh, we need to come back to this. Uh, we we need to come back to this because yeah, I think yeah, yeah. this is uh, this is a very important part of roasting, yeah. and and it's it's uh, ridiculous um, how roasting has become. Let's draw a straight declining line uh, versus let's understand what we do and taste the differences in terms of roasting, right? Mm. Um, so uh, making a, a a line look in a certain way doesn't make you a good roaster. Yeah, well that's a good part to end on. Cool. Uh, we'll be back. Again, with uh, more videos, possibly about roasting, possibly about brewing, possibly about competitions. We should do a brewing one. Yeah, yeah we should do a brewing one at some point. If you have anything you want to see us brew or, or any suggestions, let us know. We have a, a comment section down below. Yeah. Um, you're also welcome to reach out to us on the website as well. And uh, you can find us on Instagram, of course. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll see you again next week. <laughs>